Pincus, Amanda, we're in your beautiful house here in Rockcliffe. Pincus, you've lived here in Ottawa since uh, 1999, uh, but where is home for you? Right here. Right here? Yeah. It's where you are, where you happen to be. Exactly. All right, what does home mean to you? Amanda. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, Amanda, what is your favorite room nook in your home and why? Probably where all my shoes and clothes are, just because it's like shopping every day. Yes. Because um, the rest of the time I'm in a suitcase traveling, mm -hmm. and I only have a few things. So then when I come home, I get to shop in my, my own room. Is Pincus allowed in that room? Yeah, only when I'm showing him things. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, Pincus, obviously classical music is your passion. But what do you listen to while you're working out or doing other stuff? Or what's on your iPod that's not classical? Nothing. It's all classical all the time? Yeah, I, know. I only listen when I have to listen. I don't really listen to music. Really? Yeah. Because I have music all the time in my, in my head anyhow. Yes. 24-7, yeah. so why do I need to listen to it if it's in my head already? So during downtime, you would need prefer... An I don't need an iPad to listen to music. I can hear it without that. I have really? born, I'm born with a battery in it already. Really? <laughs> yes. And, and to relax, then, you would prefer not to be hearing music. You would Correct. prefer quietness. That would be nice, but it doesn't happen to our brains very often. Our brains are full of music. All I, the time. I, myself, I have to clear out whatever my battery is doing, yes. which is because we, we repeat so much when we practice that um, it'll continue. The motor will continue what you've been practicing, even finger motion, and also mental and listening, as he said it's like an iPod in his head. Right. Um, so huh. I put on something opposite, like Prince, right. to clear that out. Because otherwise I'll continue singing in my head the same piece until I play again. Now, do you ever put on, if she puts on something like Prince, do you ever put on something? I don't put Prince on when he's in the house. <laughs> he doesn't like Prince? No. No, no it's not what I like. I think, it's, it's, I, I think one has the respect for, as a musician, one has the respect for the other musician. So you try right. to make as little noise as possible. Right. When we practice, we practice with a closed door, not necessarily in an open space. Right. Since there are um, no walls in the house. Right, right. You have to choose wisely where, the, where, just, where there is a door. Yes. It's amazing. You know, sometimes I actually will take a CD if I have to listen to a take of something. Uh-huh. Um, I'll put it in the car because that's when I'm alone in the car. Right. If I'm alone in the car, of course. I've got 18 speakers in that Audi. It's a fantastic <laughs> sound. And I can concentrate. It's an enclosed space. Yeah, and I can concentrate exactly on what I need to concentrate. Yeah. Where at home, somebody else would be phoning or whatever is happening. There'd be a disturbance. This right, way, right. there's no disturbance. It's just the road. And I listen to the thing. When I, after 15 or 20 minutes of a movement, I'll say, I like this and I don't like that. And I call up and I say, that's okay or not okay. That's right, all. right, right. Amanda, what is a favorite memory in your home? Um... I just like it when lots of people are here and mm -hmm. we're all celebrating whatever we're celebrating the day. Birthday. It doesn't have to be a birthday. birthday. Anniversaries, me. birthdays, Oscars sometimes. Yes. And we yeah. used to have really good Oscars Oscar parties, parties here. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people in the orchestra used to bring, uh, we used to, I used to be the barman and, yes. um, and uh, we used to have competitions and we had the big screen up and a friend would bring a big screen and we'd uh, all dress up. It was quite funny. One, one year was really funny. <laughs> My mom was coming in from Australia and um, I didn't want to interrupt the party to pick her up. So yes. we laid a huge red carpet all the way down the front stairs, oh, all the way down the driveway. Oh. And then we had like a fake videographer. Yes. And then she got up and I sent the limo to pick her up. And then they <laughs> arrived here and we were all dressed to the nines. And yes. she got out in her horrible, you know, airplane outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we're like, what are you wearing? Who are you wearing? And she says, a black bag. <laughs> <laughs> So parties, basically, yeah, and then you have friends and yeah. family over. Okay. Yeah. Pincus, you've been playing music uh, since you were four? No. No? Five. Five. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> tomato, tomato. So in a way, really predestined to I be... I was two. You were two? Yeah. Imagine that. Holy... Uh, so anyway, in a way, it was sort of predestined to be what you are. Um, but did you ever dream of becoming something else? I wanted to be a tennis player at one time in the 70s. Really? Yeah. I actually used to carry a tennis racket inside my violin case on top with a zipper. Yes. For passports and things like that, papers. Right. I used to carry it 
inside there was a wooden racket before these big ones. Sure. Jimmy Connor style. Was, that's exactly who I wanted to be. Really? Yeah, because I saw him play and I thought, wow, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I used to arrive at an airport and go right to the club. Yeah. Depending on what city it was, I would call up before and I would play for a couple of hours. Right. And then I go and rehearse, practice, and then do the same thing the next day after a rehearsal. Uh huh. I played nonstop practically. So you must have been pretty good. Ah, uh, not really. <laughs> no. I mean, I could play sort of B, B players in a club, maybe. Yes. Depending on the serve. <laughs> yeah. At what point did you realize? Okay, really? It, did the music overtake that, eclipse that, or no, did no, you no, realize it's, this it's is my, going? It's my big. Backside that overtook that. I, 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 You're not built to be a tennis player. I never had the legs for it. You know? I tried, but it, yes. it, never, it never quite worked. He's so. too stocky. Interesting. <laughs> what about you, Amanda? Did you ever dream of becoming something else? Well, I always would say as a kid, it would have to do something with dogs. Um, right. It would have to be. I mean, I would always say I, w I would want to be a dog trainer or working with dogs, rescuing dogs, or grooming dogs, which I did a lot of with my yes. past dog. Um, and just being around as many dogs as possible. Right. Um, they were my brother and sister growing up because I'm an only child, <coughs> both only children, but I always considered them the friendliest of creatures and I just love to be around them. So, yeah. um, even if I was in a, mm. in a fly ball association, I, I dreamed of having a dog. I've never had a big dog since I was, before I was in college to be able to do the fly ball and yes. no time. Yes. But, um, that would be a dream of mine just to this you know if something happened to my hands or something and I couldn't play the cello anymore I think I'd be heavily involved in that Amanda Forsyth dog whisperer <laughs> I wish okay um, Amanda what is your idea of happiness <sighs> freedom freedom <sighs> <laughs> That's happiness. happiness is is in, is being able to laugh every day yeah um, feeling not so much, not angst, not panic. Mm -hmm. To be free of panic would be nice. But <laughs> why do I you think, feel panic? I think, I mean, I think everyone in in their business mm. has. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but it's a sense of I have to get this done. This has to be done. This has to be done. It's kind yeah. of a timing thing. Um, and did I use my time wisely? And which is very odd since life is very long. Yeah. But yet sometimes it isn't long, so each day should be lived as your last, not, not being all panicky about the fact that you're late or, you know. I mean, we as musicians, <laughs> we live by the clock because mm. um, rehearsal starts at this time, which means you have to warm up and you have to be warmed up by that time. Right. And you have to make sure you're there driving-wise, mm -hmm. traffic-wise, subway-wise, yeah. streetcar-wise, mm -hmm. um, airplane-wise, getting to the airport, you know, Delays always in the airport. Always preparing. Yeah, it's always yeah. for the actual end result is the performance mm -hmm. is what we do. But um, getting there, that's the thing. And <laughs> that, getting there that makes prepared. Me very panicky. Yeah. yeah. I and being prepared and being mm -hmm. calm enough to be able to, you know, communicate what it is you've been preparing for. Right. But um, this whole panicky of transportation and airplanes and airports and cars and. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Right. <laughs> you do all that stuff. It's a preparing, preparing. You get there and then you wait. <laughs> and then, yes. He calls and it hurry up and wait. Yeah. Hurry up and wait. All yeah. the yeah. time. It's There's amazing. so much waiting. That drives me crazy. When when we have a few weeks where we're not traveling, this is sheer bliss. Right. But also at the same time, panicky because I'm thinking, well, oh. i got to get more stuff done. Yeah, i exactly. got to use this time wisely. Exactly. Right. All right. Pincus, conversely, what is your idea of misery? Out of tune play. Sorry, what? Out of tune play. <laughs> out of tune. To listen to or hearing, a, hearing yeah. some himself lousy, or anyone else. Yes. Hearing a lousy performance or people actually, in the musical sense, people really not looking and obeying what it says in the score. That right. bugs me. You can't imagine. Right. Right. And it's uh, and I call mediocrity poison, so I stay away from it. Right. And it's another way of celebrating, by the way. Yeah, it's staying away from mediocrity. <laughs> and poison. And poison, yeah. <laughs> All right, and again, Pincus, this is for you. Uh, who do you admire, uh, or who are your heroes? It doesn't necessarily need to be in the musical world. It, it doesn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do you admire? Who do well, you admire? I admire Mozart. 
Yeah, really. Mozart, obviously. Um, I would say that uh, probably Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo is a kind of a toss up. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I say these two names first is because they created something that no one else could ever do. And by that, bring, bringing their art form, their ability, brought the whole standard of making sculptures oh. and paintings up, and mm -hmm. of course, composition in Mozart's sense. There were many others. Yes. I then, of course, <clears throat> I think that when I <clears throat> saw Jimmy Connors play for the first time with a T2000, I don't know if people remember that, so Wilson, uh, he just wiped Ken Rosewell off that court. Wait a second, are you talking about a type of racket here? Yeah, okay, T2000. T2000. Wilson, the wooden T2000. racket. Okay, no, yes. It was no longer wooden. It was, I don't know. Oh, okay. It was some kind of a metal thing. Aluminum titanium. or titanium? No, it wasn't titanium. No, it was metal, but it was T2000. Yes. And um, something like that. And he wiped off Ken Rosewell, should have won. We wanted him to win, all of us right. in London at that time. Right. And seeing that at Wimbledon, I was, I mean, I couldn't believe it. But of course, there he was, 18, 19. Yeah. And he came up to, nobody, I mean, nobody expected it. Right. And he changed the game overnight, literally overnight. I yes. mean, there have been other people since then, of course, yes. that have gone beyond that, let's say, in records, but the actual day. And then there are other people. Mickey Mantle was one of the great baseball players. Yes. Uh, it's the way he also imposed his ability on the... He made everybody better on the, on the pitch, on the, well, in the stadium. Because of his uh, playing. Because, in, absolutely. Yeah. And the way he carried himself and the symbol he... Obviously Gretzky, and when it comes to, to hockey, there's no one has ever been like Gretzky. Now, I've been other great players, mm -hmm. but Gretzky really put the game into a different... It's because of Edmonton. Because of Edmonton. There's something in the water. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're born in Edmonton? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was born in South Africa, but grew up in Edmonton. Grew up in Edmonton. So we have a joke about lots of nice things coming from Edmonton. Not, yes. Nothing to do with me. Right. <laughs> so, you know, and what you're saying is greatness. People that have raised the level of uh, their game, uh, music, whatever, whatever their forte is. People that have made a difference, changed it, made it better for, being, for having been in it. Whether yes, that's hockey, many tennis, music. Many philosophers, writers, yeah. dancers. Yeah. Um, there are not that many in a given 75 years. Right. But when you can actually know personally, let's say in my case, two or three mm -hmm. during your lifetime that actually did that, mm -hmm. that's a blessing. Right. And you try to emulate that all your life. And that's what I do. I and the, the, the few that you knew during your lifetime, you're talking about Connors and, uh, and Gretzky. Michelangelo. <laughs> and, you, anyway. and Mozart. No, but uh, you people... You ate dinner last night. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd like to have what you were drinking. <laughs> No problem. Okay. <laughs> Amanda, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you as well, who do you admire? I mean, I, I couldn't decide on what concept. Who do I admire? It doesn't have to be music, just yeah. who pops. I mean, it could be uh, your mom. It could be anybody. Um, just I admire my mom for sure. I admired, yeah. admired my dad mm -hmm. an, an intense amount because he was my music teacher right. since I was a little girl. Right. And um, he taught me lots and lots and lots about what I wanted to be and what I didn't want to be. Yes. Um, you wanted to be a wannabe? <laughs> <laughs> but his composing f music for me and all the music that he produced in his lifetime is extraordinary. And since he's passed away, I'm really realizing how much I admired him. You yeah. know, with father and daughter strife and all that. Sure. But yeah. um, quite an amazing person that started out as a soccer player professionally and then oh. became a painter and then a pianist and then a trombonist and then a composer wow. and, and then a conductor yeah but I mean the composing is what he's remembered for the most yeah so he was he was a uh, he was person always striving for um, something else you know so he, ne one he never laid on his laurels that's for sure yeah so I really admired my dad and then of course my all-time hero in music is Jacqueline Dupre who okay. is um, who was just has always been my inspiration. Right. Okay. Great. Amanda, <clears throat> uh, your favorite qualities in a man? Large shoulders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> large chest. Yes. Big head. Uh, very important. <laughs> yes. Um, because I want someone to carry me through life mm -hmm. and feel that they're stronger than I am. I made a list a long time ago about who would be my mate, mm -hmm. and 
someone had told me to do this, which I did, and I lost it. Right. Um, and then when we when we first were together, I happened upon it while we were sitting on an airplane. Right. And I was I didn't know what it was and, and mm. I started looking at all these qualities. I mean silly things and yeah. important things. Yes. And I looked next to me and I was going, check, 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 <laughs> check, check. Oh my god, right. this is the one. Yeah. <laughs> I passed, yeah. you see. Yes. And he had to be better at whatever he did than I am as at, at as what I do. Who the the man that I wanted to be with had so, to be better at what he did mm -hmm. than then. I am at, at what I do. It didn't matter what profession. Right. I'm very happy that it was. Yes, music. It's fortuitous. Yes. Um, but they had to be better than me. Why? You wouldn't have liked know. it? Really? I don't hmm. know. It's a strange thing. It comes yeah. from my father, I think. Yeah. I'll blame it on my dad because he's not here now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Pincus, your favorite qualities in a woman? Mmm. <laughs> It doesn't just have to be a man. It could be all women, your no, mother. It doesn't, you know, sure. women, women. Well, I think a certain warmth, mm -hmm. with a certain warmth and a quality of belonging, mm -hmm. um, it brings out in me a kind of wanting to have this person. Right. Um, the beauty and the sexiness and all that, it's obvious. Yes. Um, I do tend to go towards blonde. Well, I'm lucky again. I got a real blonde this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh -huh. Talent is fantastic. Yeah. This I'm, time. Yeah. Well, I've been married <laughs> twice before. It's true. Yes. Um, we've been together a long time. You know, 14 years. So mm. it's not no news really. Right. Um, talent, I think, is something in abundance that Amanda has, which I have the greatest respect for. Mm -hmm. And she also has the best, one of the best ears I've ever come across. Ears in listening. Mm -hmm. Not just telling you what it is, but listening. Mm -hmm. Many people don't really listen. I don't mean listen to conversation. No, music. You're the deep, not just music, depth of understanding right. in listening. That's a very, extraordinary quality that I think comes with ability, talent, and I think a lot of DNA. Her DNA is something that's very unusual. Some people call it just talent. Right. I like to call it all those things. Right. And that's it. The rest of it is just putting it together and how it works in relationships, physical relationship, yeah. emotional relationship, understanding of a relationship that we have. Mm. And it's a work in progress, and it always will be. Pinkus, first of all, how would you like to be remembered? Uh, somebody who played with a nice sound and in tune. Simple but good. And Amanda? Um, someone who loved. <laughs>